Is there a teapot orbiting the sun? What can science tell us about the likelihood of such a teapot? And if you start a band, what should you call it? Find out today on Moon Jelly Magazine. Bertrand Russell proposed a mythical China teapot orbiting the sun between Earth and Mars. He felt that if he proposed such a thing, a thing which we could never prove even with our best telescopes, then people would not be justified in believing him merely because they could not disprove his claim of a cosmic teapot. Before we go on, I just want to acknowledge that the cosmic teapot just sounds cool. If you're starting a band, there's your name. You're welcome. Russell extends his analogy to the realm of Christianity saying he does not feel justified believing in God merely because he cannot disprove the existence of God. And not only does he think this is clever, but there are all kinds of people stupid enough to share this little gem as if it's unanswerable. What evidence do you have to support your claims of atheism? Uh, cosmic teapot. Yeah. Wait for the next generation, America. This is the level of philosophy of which they're capable, and no more. I'm blaming the Teletubbies and Spongebob. I had an atheist who was mad at me for defining the word atheist to mean atheist toss this little one at me because he was simple enough to believe its conclusion. But let's examine it, shall we? 1. The claim invokes the existence of a teapot. So far, so good. 2. The claim involves something orbiting the sun between Earth and Mars. I think we're all familiar with the concept of orbiting the sun. I'm doing it right now. And I think we all feel the evidence for Mars to be sufficient to say it exists. And since Mars is not touching the Earth, we know there's a space between us and it. Once again, rocking and rolling in space. 3. The claim combines these ideas into a single event, a teapot orbiting the sun between Earth and Mars. Now, had this claim involved a live elephant orbiting the sun between Earth and Mars, we could here call it quits. An elephant is possible, and even likely. Orbiting, we already agree, can happen. But when you put a live elephant in space, he doesn't do as well as a teapot. In fact, he dies. And as a result, you eventually lose your funding for your giant trebuchet program. Putting the teapot into space doesn't make the scenario impossible. So here we can agree to it being possible. Four, no sane person ever suggested you must believe anything you cannot disprove. Seriously, if you know of one, send us an email. It seems that if an atheist is ignorant enough, then he can think that Christians believe in God merely because they can't disprove his existence. I'm wondering if they ever considered how long the Bible is. Do they really think it takes more than a thousand pages to say? Well, I can't think of any good reason to say God isn't there, so I suppose Jesus rose from the dead after three days. Dude, it would take a team of lawyers just to fill a single page with that mess. In the argument about defining atheist, this was tossed at me in this Russellian way. I think the word atheist means atheist. Oh yeah? Cosmic teapot! Oh, okay. I guess you, the self-declared atheist who's called my belief in God ridiculous, have no burden of proof. And now I am an atheist. About this teapot? <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what he expected, but calling upon what I have learned from my seven seasons of Mythbusters on DVD, I said the concept of a teapot orbiting the sun was plausible. Thus, having no reason to declare it impossible, I was forced to say I was agnostic toward this teapot. Now of course I can come up with a list of reasons I think it very unlikely, but thinking something unlikely is not the same as having proved it not to be so. This is where Russell fails. There are 4,000 years worth of arguments, philosophy, first-hand eyewitness accounts, including that of God himself. But Russell is either ignorant of them, or he pretends they aren't there. So he decides, based on his ignorance or willing blindness, that, therefore, it is so improbable and unprovable that God exists that he may as well be a teapot orbiting the sun. In 1958, he wrote, Nobody can prove that there is not between the Earth and Mars a China teapot revolving in an elliptical orbit but nobody thinks this sufficiently likely to be taken into account in practice. I think the Christian God is just as unlikely. 
But of course, in claiming that God is as unlikely, he's moved from the rejecter of a claim to being the stater of a claim. Thus, in trying to explain why he doesn't have the burden of proof, he's adopted the burden of proof. Why, Mr. Russell, is it just as unlikely? What? I don't know. Whatever. Gosh. After all, the teapot is something no one claims and no one offers proof of. And God is something we all know and for which many proofs have been given for thousands of years. In short, Russell's philosophy is so ignorant and childish that it can't help but attract ignorant and childish people to it. Like Moths to the Flame. Moths to the Flame! Which would also be a cool name for a band. Alright, Sugar Bomb is out. Peace. Moth to the flame! Duck a duck a duck a moth to the flame! Duck a duck a duck a moth to the flame!